Well, hello, friends. It's Pearl of Wisdom here, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom coming to you live from the basement of my Seattle apartment. If you'd like to see the upstairs version of my Seattle apartment, check me out live from 3 to 5 today, or 5 days a week during the week. Uh, I do a uh, NHL show basically talking about all topics NHL. We have lots of people in there. We have great conversation. Conversation a lot like what happens in the chat in the videos that I enjoy so much. And we have somebody, Gavin, here. Uh, I'm going to be doing, I should tell you right away, I'm going to be doing, a, I am doing a series of Jack Eichel being traded to every team in the NHL just for fun to see. Because I had a lot of people offering a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and I was like, this isn't enough, and we got to go to it. And then Gavin's taking it even one step further, and I think he's right. I think he's correct. I might be, I'm probably underselling Eichel here. So I wanted to read it out to you. If Adams hears your offer on L.A., he hangs up the phone. If Byfield is not part of the deal, the deal starts with Turcotte, Kapari, Kaliev, plus. Okay, my deal was Velarde, Bjorn, uh, Fort and the next two first round picks, okay? And he's saying plus, so he's probably talking about a first or something of that nature. He goes on to say there will be two deals for Eichel. One to two high quality prospects, of A level prospects, plus a B level prospect and a first round pick, or three to five A to B level prospects plus first round picks. For example, Byfield is a level is a level prospect because a level prospect because he is a top center potential. Turcotte is more of a second line center. I'm going to kind of alliterate this. I'm going off on an. He's going from articles from the Athletic. The Athletic is fantastic. Anyways, Kapari is a BC level prospect. The um, and the ninth best prospect in LA. Yeah, I'm not a huge Kapari fan. Uh, as a middle six winger, somewhere around there. I agree, somewhere around there. Kalia projects as a top 40, as a 40-goal score. That's possible. Um, it's debatable, but I really like him a lot. Uh, with that said, high-quality package will be a Byfield, Turcotte, Kapari, and a first-type package. Okay, now, my answer to him was uh, basically... If you look at what I was offering, first of all, I'm huge on Bjornfort, I'm hu and I'm huge on Velarde. I think Velarde just had a down year. So with that in mind, actually, you can make a case what he's saying is correct. The fact that I project Velarde to have a much better year next year doesn't change the fact that he had a down year, and we're trading him off a down year. So he's actually correct. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to change my. I think actually he's obviously very. Uh, well versed in in, ho in hockey, he's fantastic. Uh, that's why I like doing this. I'm no better than anybody else out there. Pretty much, we're all just kind of. I just like to do videos and talk about trades. Um, so I would say try this. Then I love Bjorn Ford. I know the Kings do too. He's only a 20 year old kid. He's going to be. I think he's going to be a top two defenseman. Velarde, I think, had a down year. So if you ask me about Velarde or uh, Turcotte. I'm on the fence on both. I really, really, I probably lean Velarde in the long run, to tell you the honest truth. I could be wrong, but I just love his size and I love his uh, determination. And like I said, I think he had a little bit of a sophomore slump and he's going to bounce back next year. So put in, uh, I would love, love, love to get uh, Kaliev in that deal. So I have a starting point of what I said. We're talking to other teams, and I'm going to call back L.A. and go, you know what? Uh, I guess I would be uh, Blake. And they go, you know what? With what the offers I have, I got to go. I got I got to get Kaliev in this deal, too. Uh, so that would be Velarde, Kaliev, Bjornfort, and two firsts which it's very likely LA is not ready for prime time. They could be some solid first round picks in a very solid drafts because it wouldn't be this draft. Remember, we're talking about uh, 
we are talking about uh, the next year because we're talking about Eichel coming back from injury. So you're looking at uh, especially the 2022-23. Uh, wait, it's a 21-22 is next. 2022-23, you got Savoy and Wright. And then after that, you got Bedard and Morozov and a whole bunch of freaking guys. So could be absolutely enormous for Buffalo to get those two first-round picks. It all depends on how good you think L.A. is going to be if they get Eichel in the deal. Is it going to improve them so much that they're going to be right around, you know, is they're actually going to make the playoffs or something of that nature? That's the gamble you're taking when you're talking about first-round picks. But thank you. That you're, I, think you're, I think you're very correct there. I was probably underselling and looking at some guys that I project more than where they're really at right now. Velarde did have a down year. So I, we can use that and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to need more than Velarde. I, I don't know if he just had a down year. If he would have crushed this year, maybe different. So thank you very much. And uh, I heard you're dating Pauline Gretzky. Well, don't tell my wife. That was Rano. Mr. Rano, he's been following me for a long time. Okay, so I thought I'd check that out. I'm going to do a, two more teams here real quick. Tell me what you think about what Gavin had to say here in the comment section. What you think about what I just said. I'm not afraid to take a ribbon. You don't have to be nice. I don't care. <laughs> Let's have fun. Okay, uh, so the next two teams we got is the Ottawa Senators. Now, we're going to take... Mr. Gavin's uh, idea here of like saying two, two top A pro uh, the question is, is Eichel going to get that much? And in the end, it doesn't look like it right now, but in the end, I'd say Gavin is probably right. I probably undersold on that trade. So looking at that, you, Ottawa Senators, now, I don't think they want to really make this trade, but we're doing every team, and I'm starting with the teams with the most cap space for this, so I'm going to quickly go over it. I don't think Ottawa has much of a chance here. you got to be giving up Tim Stutzla in this deal, I'm pretty sure. Either that or Thomas Shabbat. Um, they might want to do that. You think, okay, no, I'm not giving up to Tim Stutzla, but think about Eichel as a hundred, possibly a 120-point player in the league, playing beside Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson. That is an incredible line. Now, again, this goes by how big, how much of a player do you think Tim Stutzla is going to be? I think he's going to be a pretty unbelievable player. I love him. If I'm Ottawa, I'm thinking I'm really got to think here, not straight across. I probably do it straight across. But if I'm going to add what, what Gavin is saying, you need Tim Stutzla, uh, uh, Eric Brandstrom, um, and maybe and Joshua Norris because you don't really need Joshua Norris. So Stutzla, Norris, Brandstrom, and their first next year, maybe their first after that. That's what you're looking at, Ottawa fans. Something of that nature. Now, Gavin... Let me know if you think that's here as well, if I'm still underselling Eichel in this trade as well. I don't think so here. I think this is a real lot, a lot to give up. And if I'm Ottawa, I don't think, I'm not sure I do it. Um, I don't know. I come from a place where you built the team already. You built, you put all these guys together. You could maybe toss Sanderson in there instead of Branstrom since he's not already on the team. You built some chemistry. Do you want to just dismantle all those pieces for one player? Tough call, because you're talking about a generational player like Eichel. Is Stutzla a generational player? Ask yourself that. Tell me in the comment section. Do you think Stutzla is a generational player? Uh, like, um, is Panarin a generational player? We're talking about guys like McDavid, Matthews, stuff like that. You put him in that level. See, I think Stutzla is just below that. Tell me if you think otherwise. Okay, so uh, I, you don't really need to worry about uh, cap space here. Ottawa would have plenty of cap space, especially after they make all these, all this, uh, move all these pieces on top of the trade. So I want to go, I'll go quick here. Detroit Red Wings. 
Detroit Red Wings would probably be very interested in this deal. So we're going to kind of go off of Gavin's, I generally off of what Gavin is saying. You're talking about two top level uh, prospects or players. Dylan Larkin is not a top level prospect anymore, but almost assuredly, Adams is saying, I want Larkin as part of this deal. And I don't, I am not sure that anything other than Larkin in this deal is going to be a deal. Um, unless they really just want to tear it down completely and not worry about winning for a while. And that's the thing. I don't think Buffalo is in that position. They need to look at doing this really quick. So you're going to be looking at Dylan Larkin, probably Philip Zadina. And uh, I wanted to look at their defenseman. That German defenseman, where is he? How come they don't have him here? Uh, but let's go with William Volander. But where is that? Oh, is he in the AHL this year? Miners. Uh, somebody tell me what his name is out there. Tell me in the bottom what his name is. I thought I had it here already. And I don't see him. So, um, what the heck is his name? Doesn't matter. German defenseman they picked up in two drafts ago. I'd want that. I'd want uh, Dylan Larkin. And I would want, you know, you're looking at Philip Zadino or Michael Rasmussen and two first round picks. Are you willing to give up that for Eichel? Maybe. Maybe. This is a possibility because they, because Detroit has a ton of players coming up right now. Um, and I mean a ton. Their prospects, they have a lot of prospects pe people don't know about, but they're nailing second rounders. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Ber Bergeron is, is lighting it up. Look at, look at his numbers here. Look at his numbers in Sweden as a kid. 45 points in 49 games already in Sweden. In the Swedish Elite League. He's putting up a point a game already as a second rounder. And he was a second rounder in 2018. Uh, Theodor Niederbach also putting up big numbers uh, uh, in the junior 20 division. Uh, 35 points in 19 games. Played some games in the Swedish Elite League. They have a lot of players coming up. They, I could see him possibly making a deal like this. Here's a reason, one of the reasons why. A lot of these players have been losing, losing, losing a lot. And um, it's possible that they could change the flavor and bring in a guy like Eichel, who, let's face it, I mean, I think one thing we need to look at here is uh, who Jack Eichel is. Jack Eichel is up there with, is right close to Matthews and McDavid's and stuff like that. I can't say close to McDavid, but Matthews maybe just below, if not below. He's up there as a top five or six center, young center in the league. Larkin, I'm sure, I'm positive, if you put Eichel in this lineup, he's going to put up more points than 23 points in 44 games that Larkin put up last year. Now, he sort of had a down year as well. But um, his top end is nowhere near Eichel. But for those that are messaging me saying things like, uh, we'll give Tyler Bertuzzi, Robbie Fabry, and our first next year, and stuff like that, um, it's not going to happen. I really wish I could find that freaking defenseman. <laughs> that Why do they not have him in his pro their prospect list? I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But that's what you're looking for if you're Detroit. Something of that nature. And honestly, if you look at some of the other offers we're going to have here, this probably is not going to fly. Um, I don't think you're going to get uh, enough. You're going to have enough. You're going to have to give up a lot of your team if you're the Detroit Red Wings. If you think about the offer we just said for LA. Uh, Kaliev like I said, a possible 40-goal score. Um, if you're going to try to match with that, you're going to be looking at uh, Larkin, Zadina, maybe a 40-goal score. He's been kind of iffy. Um, the, uh, like I said, in uh, the d defenseman, 
uh, a Volander. Um, you're going to be throwing everything you can at this trade, is what I'm trying to tell you, to even have a chance. Uh, Philip Peronic would be in there. That's not leaving you much on your team going forward. So you're almost rebuilding all over again. So the question is, do you want to stay where you are or do you want to do you, do you want to go with Eichel? And, uh, you know, you've got uh, you've got a lot of first rounders coming in next year that should be um, able to play very soon as well and build around that. It completely depends on what they think about the prospect pool that they have there. And there is many people, many prospects for Detroit, for some reason, is not on cap friendly. I think it was Anderson last year uh, that they picked, and he's not. Oh, here he is, Marit Sider. Marit Sider. That's and Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond, Marit Sider. Sorry, I finally found it. Lucas Raymond and Marit Sider. It was in the loaned part of it. Um, you may even have to go with both of those. Marit Sider, Lucas Raymond, Larkin, and a first. Something of that nature. When thinking about getting a guy like Eichel, think about that. By the way, I love Maurice Sider. What kind of numbers did he put up in Sweden this year? 28 points in 41 games. And offense isn't his main uh, part of his game. He's an awesome defensive defenseman, though. And then Lucas Raymond, what did he do this year? He's He looks like he's going to be absolutely crushing it as well. 18 points in 34 games as a kid. Pretty darn good numbers for in Sweden. So those are the kind of players you're looking at if you want to get somebody like Eichel. And thank you very much for uh, bringing that up in the chat uh, there, uh, Gavin. Uh, we will continue doing that. Tell me what, you, what more you think you're going to have to give up for certain players and stuff like that because this is fun. I'll be doing two more teams for you ne tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to send this out right now. Don't be afraid to hit the subscribe and the bell. I do these really quick. I'm doing them as I have a show. I also have a Patreon where I do professional capping, stuff like that. But every once in a while, I like to just come out and throw this out there just to get some chat going. And uh, it's my fun. It's what I like to do. I like to have fun like that. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Oh, by the way, Steel Flyers. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. That's the fellow that pays my bills. And it's an amazing website. We got 8,500 hits and it just started. We just started the website. We had 8,500 hits in less than a month. Steel Flyers website. It is incredible. Have a great day. Okay, bye.